Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in AP English and our Roberts text. We're now working with Gwendolyn Brooks, the mother, uh, her 1945 very controversial uh, offering, often it is referred to as an anti-abortion poem. We're going to take a look at the poem, we'll be working with it at multiple levels. At level one, what does it say? At level two, what does this text mean? And finally, at level three, how can I relate to this information in some meaningful way? Although it is controversial, and although obviously the topic here is very controversial, we obviously want to show respect. Respect, of course, to all of the differing opinions that surround this kind of a question. And of course, no doubt, appreciating the great Gwendolyn Brooks. Her date, 17, uh, 1917 to 2000. Of course, she's a great American um, um, poet and teacher. Won the Pulitzer Prize in uh, 1950. We've given uh, Learn Strong lectures on the work of uh, Brooks, especially her Explorer. And later in, uh, Roberts will be working with her poem, We Real Cool. Let's listen to a reading of this poem by Brooks, and then we'll uh, do some work specifically with the poem, all right? This is The Mother by Gwendolyn Brooks. Abortions will not let you forget. You remember the children you got that you did not get. The damn small pulps with little or no hair. The singers and workers that never handle the air. Never neglect or beat them, <laughs> or silence, or buy with a sweet. You'll never wind up this sucking thumb, or scuttle off ghosts that come. You will never leave them, controlling your luscious sigh, and we return for a snack of them. The gobbling mother eye. I have heard in the voices of the wind, the voices of my dim, killed children, I have said, Sweets, if I sinned, if, if I seized your luck and your lives from your unfinished reach. If I stole your births and your names, your straight baby tears and your games, your stilted or lovely loves, your tumults, your marriages, your aches, your If I poison the beginnings of your breaths, believe that even in my deliberateness, I was not deliberate. Though why should I whine? Whine that, that the crime was other than mine, since anyhow, or you are dead, or rather, or instead, You were never made. But that too, I am afraid, is faulty. Oh, what, what should I say? How is this truth to be said? You were born. You had body. You died. It's just that you never giggled or planned or cried. Believe me, I loved you all. Believe me, I knew you, though faintly. But I loved, I loved you.
the reading, of course, of this poem lends to the genius of this poem. Notice the poem will begin with the word abortions, end with the word all, and in between, notice the rhythms, notice the rhyme scheme, hair, air, beat, sweet, and very intentional repetition of words. Notice we begin with you, then to the word your, then to the word I. Notice the repetition of the word if, the potentialities, of course, that will be referenced here and lost. Now, of course, in two way, major messages, well, it's compelling, isn't it? The loss of potentiality is probably going to be for us one of the major messages of a poem like this. Notice as well the possible message of how is the truth to be said, she will say at roughly line 27. Making us think at 3A already about the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, it is impossible to say just what I mean. Of course, as well we could point out at 2B, the power of repetition in this poem. Notice the pausing that as well happened as Ms. Brooks read the poem, your long pause, deaths, and of course the use of the word all at the end, powerful. At 3A, the other texts of Gwendolyn Brooks, I hope a reading like this will lead you to do more reading. We Real Cool, as I said, we're going to meet in, uh, in Roberts as well. And I've already given a, 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 a set of comments on, at LearnStrong.net on Explorer. Of course, the notion of having to live with tough choices is one that Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner we can write down, and any number of other texts that you could write down the difficult decisions that one must make or feel one must make, and then of course having to live with those decisions. The potentialities gone, the lost potentialities, and finally of course at 3D, what was a time in your life when you had to live with a very difficult decision, one that continues to trouble you, as clearly the speaker in this poem is having to deal with the fact that it is in fact hard for the truth to be said. What a genius text with that idea in mind. The notion that sometimes there are no words. Well, I leave you uh, to further study of this poem and more of Brooks. What an amazing, amazing writer. Thank you.